Are you studying accounting and been asked to make some reversing entries and not know how to do it? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm Professor Capco and I'm going to walk you through the process. But first, I wanted to mention that I believe something great is going to happen for you today. Let's get to the reversing entries process. Reversing entries are a way of reversing out adjusting entries that are often made at the end of a fiscal year, or the end of a calendar year. Let's start out with the adjusting entry that will set this off. So I've got some other videos uh, dealing with adjusting entries and they're linked up here, but let's start with this. So we have an adjusting entry on December 31st of the prior year and it it says that you have determined that the company's employees have accrued $5,000 in wages payable to date. Payday, however, isn't until next week. So we're going to accrue those wages because this is an accrual accounting company. So we're going to have wages expense. Of five thousand dollars so we're going to go ahead and expense it here at the end of the year but we're not paying it yet because payday is until next week in the following year so we're going to credit wages payable for that same amount let me show you how those transactions would look on the t accounts which we're going to treat these as if they are the ledgers. So we've got a wages expense account and we're going to have some sort of balance sitting in there already in the debit column. That's for all the wages that have been paid throughout the year. We have just debited wages expense for 5000 So I'm going to go ahead and debit $5,000 to this account. We're going to credit wages payable. This is a liability account, so it goes up with credits. So we've now recorded this transaction and our books balance. Let's look at the next step. The next step is going to be our closing entry. Again, I've got other videos about closing entries, so I'm not going to go into too much detail on this. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the closing entry. I'm going to do this one in purple just to distinguish it from the others. So we're going to close out the wages expense account. And we know the wages expense account is sitting there with a debit balance. And we're just going to say it's X's because we don't know what it is because we would know what it is as an accountant, but I'm just showing it like this for purposes of this video. So we know we have to, since it is a debit balance, we're going to need to credit it. We're going to need to credit it for the same amount as the debit balance because we want to zero out this account to close it. So we already know the credit. The credit is going to be wages expense. And we know we have to have a debit for an equal amount, but what account will that go to? Well, that's going to go to our income summary account. Again, we'll go into more, de more detail in other videos on that. I just want to set us up for the reversing entry. So we're debiting income summary. And we're crediting our wages expense. So this account now is zero. It's been zeroed out. Let's move on to the next transaction. This is now the reversing entry. This is the one that you've come here to see. So this is what it's all about. And I'm going to do this one in, let's do this one in red. I'm going to do this one in red. We have a reversing entry on January 1st of the following year. 
reverse the adjusting entry made on December 31st, 20X1, which would be the prior year. So this entry that we're going to reverse is the adjusting entry from up here. So just like it says, we're going to do the exact opposite. We're going to reverse it. So we're going to show this as a debit to wages payable. And that is for the $5,000 because that's the amount that we had credited over here. Because we credited wages payable $5,000, i am going to debit wages payable for $5,000. And because in that adjusting entry, we debited wages expense for $5,000, I'm now doing the exact opposite of that. And I'm going to credit wages expense for 5000 Now let's record this in our ledger. We are debiting wages payable for 5000 And you'll see that that now zeroes out this account. So temporarily, we don't have any kind of liability for wages payable, even though we know there really is because we owe our employees for last week's work. And we're going to credit wages expense for 5000 Now, this is a really weird entry because we don't do a lot of crediting of wages expense. When we're recording wages expenses, we're always debiting. We did close it out, and that was a credit, and now we're crediting it again. So we're actually sitting here with what would be considered a negative balance in our wages expense for $5,000. And I'll show you why when we now record the wages. The, way, the reason accountants will do this is because that way they don't have to keep track of how much is still owed and how much was already paid and how much was accrued. So finally, let's say January 3rd rolls around, and this should be the second year. And we're going to record the payment of wages, and we're going to pay $7,000. So that means our wages expense is $7,000, and we're paying in cash. So we're going to credit our cash account for the $7,000. That's the journal entry for it. And now let's show that in our ledger. We're going to debit wages expense. And we're going to credit cash. Thus reducing our cash. Here is the key to these entries. As you can see, our wages expense is now has a debit balance now of $2,000 because this 5,000 would reduce the 7,000 and because it's the equivalent of a negative entry or a negative balance and we now have $2,000 in our wages expense which is the exact amount as of January 3rd that we've expensed in wages for this year. The other 5,000 were expensed last year. So our timing is correct on our accruals of the expenses. So now you know how to do reversing entries, but there's more to know. So if you find this helpful, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to keep your grade alive. Thank you.